penicillin vaccines organ transplants. All these innovations are rightfully hailed as medical milestones. But if you ask me, another invention we don't really talk about in these terms more than deserves to be held in the same regard. The toilet. I'm speaking about the toilet. You should give a crap about your crapper because it has a huge impact on your life and humanity in general. Many of us take modern sanitation for granted, at best. At worst, it's an icky subject to be avoided due to what, you know, goes in there. But that's exactly the point. It goes in there and then it vanishes. Like, you know, didn't happen. That's amazing. For the vast majority of humans that have walked the earth, once they had done their business, they were kind of stuck with it. And that's by no means a problem of the past. Even today, many people around the world don't have access to adequate sanitation. That has dramatic consequences, from disease to violence to a negative impact on the local economy. The market sector itself actually has huge economic potential. The sanitation industry is a multi-billion dollar uh, business that goes well beyond the toilet into the collection and the treatment of waste and the production of products that can be reintegrated into global supply chains. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Where did it all start? Throughout history, sanitation, more and less sophisticated, appeared and disappeared repeatedly. The earliest facilities we know of appeared around 5,000 years ago in places like today Scotland, Crete, and most impressively, Pakistan. The Indus village civilization was living in today's Pakistan. They actually had water closets in their own houses, and the water supply uh, entered also each, each house, so that the civilization had water and sanitation concept which is quite similar to what we are using today. The first major breakthrough in modern loo technology came when Sir John Harrington invented the flush toilet in the late 16th century. He was an English poet, member of Queen Elizabeth I's royal court, and, funny enough, ancestor of Game of Thrones actor Kit Harrington. His Ajax device featured an elevated tank that emptied water into a bowl to wash away its contents. Almost 200 years later, in 1775, the S-trap was patented. It traps a small amount of water in the drain to prevent sewer gases from rising up. Aside from minor updates down the line, this is pretty much how modern flush toilets work today. You push a button, which opens a valve in the tank, and the toilet flushes. A floating device lowers and eventually opens another valve, letting new water flow into the tank. When it's full, you're ready to go again. But the toilet itself is only half a deal. What really changed the game is how we dispose of our waste after it's left the bowl. It's not too crazy to say that without that, the Industrial Revolution might not really have happened. In the mid-1800s, exploding populations and urbanization led to rampant outbreaks of diseases in English cities. Many diseases spread because drinking water was contaminated with sewage. The first person to discover the direct link between human waste and an outbreak was a physician named John Snow. No relation this time. After a cholera outbreak ravaged a London neighborhood in 1854, he proved that several cases had clustered around a single water pump built next to a cesspit, which was the go-to solution for waste management in those days. Then came the Great Stink. That's not the title for a new Pixar flick. It's what Londoners called the horrible stench that enveloped the city in the summer of 1858. London's waste had been dumped directly into the Thames for decades. But unusually high temperatures made the foul odor rising from the river nearly unbearable. This was the final straw and eventually led to the construction of one of the world's first modern sewage systems. When the Industrial Revolution started kicking on elsewhere, modern sanitation came with it. But like with so many other privileges of the wealth they had to create, colonized peoples did not get their fair share. There are currently 2.4 billion people in the world without improved sanitation, without sanitation facilities in their home or workplace. 
And there's 4.5 billion people, so over half the world's population, that don't have safely managed sanitation systems from the toilet all the way to the treatment of the waste. This creates a huge problem in the developing world where then people, since they don't have a toilet, are defecating in the open. This sanitation crisis causes several serious issues, chief among them risks to health. Lack of access to adequate sanitation contributes to the transmission of diseases and viral outbreaks. I was in West Africa during the, um, during the Ebola epidemic in, in 2014 and 15, and I saw firsthand the, the, the importance of these basic facilities. According to a 2019 report by the World Health Organization, inadequate sanitation is estimated to cause 432,000 deaths due to diarrhea annually. Open defecation also puts people at risk of becoming victims of violence, especially women. They face a higher risk of being sexually assaulted. And these issues also have long-term knock-on effects. It stops girls, for example, from going to school if they can't safely and hygienically go to the toilet or when they're menstruating, then they may not go to school and that often happens. Being unable to attend school makes it much harder to earn a living later on, let alone escape poverty. To tackle the issue wholesale, the SHF is not just putting up johns and running into the sunset. They support communities with education and finances to kickstart a sanitation economy. The Toilet Board Coalition came up with the sanitation economy approach in 2017, and it's made up of three distinct areas. To vastly oversimplify. By combining a marketplace for toilet-related goods and services with a marketplace for sanitation and a data-driven sanitation infrastructure, communities can establish a growing, self-sustaining economy. In order to facilitate a transition from thinking about sanitation as a cost to thinking about it as a business opportunity, we've worked with the Asian Development Bank and World Bank to understand the economic potential of a thriving sanitation economy marketplace. So we looked first and foremost at India as an example. And what we found is that there's a market opportunity of 97 billion US dollars in 2021 alone. Another big aspect of the future sanitation economy is innovation. So the sanitation crisis is multifaceted and there are many solutions that need policy and financial interventions, but there are still some areas where new technology is needed. Relatively speaking, since the great stink, not all that much has changed in how we handle sanitation. But another pressing global issue is pushing activists and scientists to rethink the status quo. Climate change. Uh, as climate changes, this can be even more challenging for sanitation because, for example, if flooding increases, then where people are relying on on-site sanitation on pit latrines, floods can wash out the contents of pit latrines, wash them onto the street, where obviously they're going to cause a health hazard. Flood waters can destroy uh, water pipes and other infrastructure. If there's drought, then uh, people might not have enough water to uh, operate uh, waterborne sewerage systems. While climate change exacerbates the issues of vulnerable sanitation infrastructure, outdated sanitation systems in many developed countries are worsening the effects of climate change. Flushing the toilet accounts for some 30% of a person's average daily drinking water consumption. Older toilets use up to 14 liters of water per flush, even though 3 liters might be plenty depending on what needs to go down the drain. In 2011, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation initiated the Reinvent the Toilet Challenge. It awarded grants to researchers to develop sustainable toilet technology that could function without connections to the public sewage systems. Teams at Delft University of Technology, for example, are using the grant to work on a water-saving toilet system that employs microwave technology to transform human waste into electricity. Cranfield University in the UK used the grant to finance the development of the nano membrane toilet. It can treat human waste without any external energy or water. The toilet relies on a mechanism activated by the pull of a lever and vaporization. After vaporizing the waste, the liquids are filtered through a special membrane. So to recap, uh, recap. the toilet has shaped human history for centuries and continues to do so. Many, many people around the world need one, and we all need new ones. So, next time, new take a leak, before you flush, 
maybe, just maybe, pause for a moment and reflect on the monumental act of human enterprise, ingenuity and perseverance you're about to perform. But don't pause for too long, that would be weird. And wash your hands afterwards. <laughs>